Thank you, Mr. Chair, Mr. Secretary. Uh, I represent Northeastern Minnesota, Minnesota's 8th Congressional District. A couple questions. What is the average, do you know the average temperature uh, in a Minnesota winter? I know it's pretty cold, but I would Well, know it's that. 12 degrees, although some of my constituents saw temperatures as cold as uh, 42 below last year. Mr. Secretary, how many states have an average winter temperature of below freezing? It's half the country. Does cold weather affect an EV's battery life, yes or no? Yes, it does. How much can an EV battery life be reduced by cold weather? Depends on the chemistry of the battery and the model that you're in, but uh, it's a substantial percentage of the yeah. uh, EV battery life. 50% 50, 50 or more. And how long does it take for a frostbite to kick in if an individual is out in the cold? Let's say the EV has run out of battery on northbound 35 between Minneapolis and Duluth. You know, I once got stuck on northbound 35. Well, 30, I know about 30 minutes. Long. It's about 30 minutes before frostbite. And Mr. Secretary, uh, do you know the average income household in the district that I represent? You probably don't, so I'll tell you. It's $69,000. Do you know what the average price of an EV vehicle is? Uh, sure, I pulled the latest numbers. The uh, models are starting around $30,000 for sedans. They're getting into the 40s. For According trucks. to Kelly Blue Book, the average price for electric, the average price for electric cars was over $53,000. Surely you're aware July. that they start closer to 30, right? My constituents would have to work a full year to pay for this unreliable car, and would barely have enough life over to, uh, li left over to care for their family. What is the average median income of a single individual EV buyer? It's $150,000. As of when? It's $150,000. As of when? Uh, I'm just asking because that number is going down each passing year. This month. Uh -huh. This month. And how much of a taxpayer-funded subsidy is given to those high-income earners to purchase their EV? As you may recall, the Inflation Reduction this. Act was uh, set in such a way that there was an income cap on how you could benefit 70, from it. So the wealthiest people are not able to take advantage of that. But we do wish we had your support Mr. Secretary, lowering you, the cost Mr. of Mr. Secretary, would you agree it's $7,500? Say again? Would you agree at $7,500? $7,500 is the maximum credit that is eligible, and we think that making for the, for the cheaper elites for working families to the tune of $7,500 is Mr. Secretary, a excuse me. Do you think that it's fair for your administration to force constituents uh, to purchase these electric vehicles when they're not working, in, especially in northern Minnesota? Well, the premise of the question is false because we're not forcing anybody to purchase any technology. Can you refer to any particular policy that forces by, anybody by 20, to purchase by 2030, by 2035, you want two-thirds of America's, uh, Americans to uh, be using electric vehicles. They don't work. Uh, in northern Minnesota in the cold weather today. And I want to just share something with you. Um, Mr. Garamendi, uh, and I agree with him, by American. Uh, last July, you sat in that same spot uh, and answered our questions. And I told you about uh, a concern that I have with child slave labor in the Democrat Republic of the Congo. And I told you that we could mine these critical minerals needed for EVs in the district that I represent under the best labor and environmental standards in the world. But you and the administration went ahead with an MOU with the DRC in January of this year. Well-documented child slave labor in the DRC. Hardly any environmental standards. And your administration chose to enter MOUs with a Congo where 15 of the 19 mines are owned by the communist country of China where they use slave laborers. It's unbelievable that you chose other workers over the American worker. And it's unbelievable that you won't allow mine, you and your administration won't allow mining here in Minnesota uh, and uh, the United States. Your Secretary of Energy, uh, uh, Secretary Granholm, came to the Western Caucus, and I happened to ask her. I said, do you know the, o uh, the only nickel mine uh, in the United States today? She couldn't answer that. Do you know where it is? No, I don't. It's in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, the Eagle Mine. It's, it's the gold standard. And she's our Energy Secretary. And do we need nickel, cobalt, and copper for these electric vehicles as we transition? The answer is yes. We need to mine here in America with America miners, American labor. We can do it. 
the biggest copper nickel find in the world, and your administration just banned it. Union labor, Mr. Secretary, that we want in your administration took the union labor off mining. And not only in northeastern Minnesota, uh, but across this country. Because today, this administration, they cannot give one example of allowing a mine to be opened in this country. And I yield back.